Hello, hello. All right. Cool. Where was I? Where was I? Oh, wait. Go, go. Mark it in, boy. Back in it. All right. Then I'm going to have a few minutes to reach there. <coughs> All right, cool. So we'll just give everyone a few minutes to, to jump in. All right. All right. So somebody had asked about the May 2014. Oh, I'll, I'll clear out that chat. Oh, bugger. All right. Hey, Faith. How are you doing? Yeah, I don't know why they am. Um, why is this not? Did I not swap the thing? Hold on one second. Did I, did I, did I, did I, where did I go? Nope, I did not. Screen and face. Screen. Somebody came? Who's that boy? Hey, hey. We were just going through the 2018 paper this morning. We um we didn't finish. We might tackle 2019 as well. Um, Jan 2019 that is. Right. Yeah, yeah, and it actually it worked a little better. They came and they changed your modem yesterday, and I was experimenting with um some of these settings, so it seemed to be holding off. All right. So you reach I I Demir. What going on? We'll give some people some time to reach. I'm gonna print out something for them. I'm gonna suggest read from Chem. All right, so I just need a couple of minutes just to get my bearings on some stuff. But um, we're going to be trying to finish off that 2018 paper, tackle 2019. Somebody asked about 2014, question one. Um, so yeah, just give me a second. Let me organize some stuff there. All right. <clears throat> yes, I, I got it. I just eat a mango. All right, all right, Faith. I'm glad you had some lunch. What is the network speed? You know, I checked that so many times the past few days. It's 40 something up. 42 up, no sorry, 42 down, and like 10 up or something, or 9 up, or was it 5, one of them. It's not ridiculously fast, but thankfully it, it allows me to do what I have to do for and with you guys. <coughs> Let me just print out. I We were working on 2018, right? Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, May, June 2018. All right, cool. So you have the, that paper, you need that paper. May, June 2018. Look at the bottom. All right, cool. Jan 2018? Actually, I'm missing that one. <laughs> I'm bored up from the finish. All right, cool. All right, let me put two copies of print in case anybody else show up. Seven twenty, all right. Nine up, yeah. That two slippers should be meant to be honest. Should be twenty at least. Yeah, yeah. Goldfish, I'll have that. I'll probably have to upgrade my package. Goldfish. Yeah, well, goldfish. Shalini, I didn't forget you. It was twenty fourteen, me or Jan. Which one was it, Shalini? Promoting advertising brand and distributing. That's what you're saying for. Um, yeah, hold on. Let me. I'll put the. I'm on the stream on this laptop here, and let me pull back up the question. Jan, Jan, twenty fourteen. Goldfish tech support. Yeah, why not? <laughs> um, Jan twenty fourteen. Question one, part C. Right, Chilini. Let's just see if we can help out Chilini real quick here before we jump back into twenty eighteen and then tackle twenty nineteen. I'll put twenty different two. Discuss two ways in which a private company is likely to change if it were to be nationalized. Is that the one, Jelini? Yeah, number one, part C. All right, so a private company is one that is owned by private individuals. And most times, the overarching objective is profit maximization. If a private company is nationalized, it means that the government has taken it over. Um, the objective of the government, of government entities is not usually to, pr to profit maximize, it's to provide service or so service maximization at an affordable price. A lot of government entities, at least in Trinidad, are loss-making, as far as I know. 
um, <coughs> sorry, and to that end, so the first thing that would change is the, well, the ownership structure, right, because you will not probably have um, shareholders, or even if you do, the government will be the majority shareholder, um, they may change out the board of directors to people of their choosing, the overarching objective would not be profit maximization, but service maximization. Um, what else if it were nationalized, boy? Now, a lot of public entities are criticized for being inefficient and wasteful. So that is something that might happen, but I don't want to necessarily paint all government entities in a, in a bad light. So, so yeah, but the major thing you could probably talk about are uh, insurance and insurance and syllabus. I believe so from Fazid. All right, wet guy, red tape. Yeah, red tape. Ah, red tape is bureaucracy. Very good, wet guy. Yeah, so bureaucracy. So, Shalini, anyway, what he's talking about is um, a lot of print um, policies and procedures have to be followed to the letter. And a lot of times that could um, just basically cause inefficiencies. So it could take unnecessarily long to get simple tasks done. So, so yeah. Sorry. So, two ways in which a private company is likely to change is that profit maximization is not likely to be the overarching objective since nationalized companies are government run it's likely to change to service maximization at an affordable price for the community for the population at large and what's the other one that i said i forget it <laughs> sorry um yeah they could they, 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 it's more likely that there'll be wastage of resources because government entities tend to be a bit more wasteful and because of bureaucracy and red tape things tend to be a bit more inefficient. All right. Wait, now you have a class there. Goldfish. Yeah, Goldfish is um, three of my students here with me. So what I'm really doing, like I say, is really the session is for them and we're sharing it with you guys on the live. Right. So, but of course, I mean, it, I do like to help people. <coughs> right. So that's why I'm, I'm sharing it with you guys. Okay. All right. Well, I see, I see people jumping into question too. Hard boy. Insurance, assurance. Uh -huh. Okay, Shalini. You're very welcome. Well, we're we doing 2018, eh? So we, this is 2014. Yeah, one of, the, one of the people on the live asked for this question. I, I was curious about it. All right, yeah, guys, just give me one second. I'm going to pop in if I get something printed out. Sorry, John, you were saying? Um, Sam Mohammed, do I do econ? I will be doing a couple of live streams next week, Sam. Um, most likely the two days before the exam, same 10 to 12 and 1 to 3, because I have class 4 to 6 and half 6 to half 8. Um, if I have any extra time to do more sessions, I will try. Right, so what Blue Diamond is saying is she's correct. Yeah, that does what is. Yeah, somebody on the line, right? Insurance is protection against a possibility, something that may never manifest. There is a risk that you will get in a vehicular accident, right? Well, right, so yeah, insurance is protection against possible risks, right? It's possible you might get in a vehicular accident, it's possible that you might develop um, a life threatening condition, but it is not. Um, it is not bound to happen. It is likely, sorry, it is possible. There's a percentage chance, but it's not 100% for sure. So insurance is protection against risks like those, right? Whereas assurance, as she, as she yeah, yeah, um, correct, right? If you are assured that something is going to happen, you are sure, you know it is going to happen. We all know we've gone dead, right? That is the only certainty in life, right? I don't want that. <laughs> You know, body fountain of youth? All right. Anyhow. <clears throat> Nicholas. Nicholas, you covered that one just now, boy. Yeah, men, we shot, we shot to dead. As I, as I said in, in, in Game of Thrones, Valam or Gulis, all men must die. All right. So, life assurance is really. Life insurance. All right. But they call it life insurance, but it actually is life assurance. You are assured that you are going to die. So, what you do is that you take out this, this plan to protect your family in the eventuality of your death. So that if they depend on you for your earnings to maintain their lifestyle, they will be compensated. In the yeah. Mm -hmm. Shorter die, like lost on fire, fountain of youth. Yeah, he man said a fountain of youth boy. 
Um, <clears throat> so which year paper is this? Kevon, this is Jan 2014. One of the girls asked, he said there was a question giving a lot of trouble. So I, I just thought I'd take a look. Because my students got lunch a little late now. So I said, well, while they're eating, I'll give them a few minutes to eat. So I'll just tackle some questions you guys had. All right. But we're jumping back to 2018 now. And then we're going to try and tackle 2019. Um, I'll be doing a lot less writing out and typing out since that, that seemed to have been slowing down the process. All right. Assurance is based on certainty. Example, life insurance. Correct, Saddam. All right. Um, but of course, I mean, I, you guys need to write out stuff in order for the articulation practice, right? So we, we, I may take a couple of them to type out. Yeah, it is 2014, John. All right. A business insurance includes fire, theft, and flood. A consequential loss insurance clause can be added to a fire insurance to compensate the business for loss after fire. All right. We're getting plenty of information there. I hope you guys taking some notes, some screenshots. That's stuff that, that, that is good to revise. All right. We'll have what? This is 2014, John. John, yeah. Yeah, John 2014. I... John 2014. See? My question to is not your question to. What is your question to say? My question to um, is a case study. That's paper 3, Liam. If you look at the front, it's paper 032. Yeah. It says that, right? Yeah. yeah. So the, the paper 3 is for people who don't do the SBA component um, for external candidates. So oh, yeah. Be, yeah. You found it? All right, cool. Once you don't have an SBA component, the paper three is what will compensate for that. Yes. Kevin, how can the government alleviate overpopulation? Kevin, boy, I was watching that question on the other paper. Um, and I honestly, boy, the only thing coming in my head was um, was some, some not so nice things, <laughs> right? But let's, let's go back there because I, I think it's worth discussing that with everyone on the chat, right? What's that? Uh, <laughs> I wasn't going that far and saying killing people. Sorry, I keep missing. Sorry, I have to make a call. One of my, my friend who works with me just called me. Well, let me just pull up the question. It's 2018. Um, Kevin, that was the 2018 paper, right? Yeah, this question here. The five part B. All right, Kevin, we will we will come back to this just now. Let's see if you can go through question four first, and then we will sort out that thing, right? China, yes, China had a policy of one. I think they relaxed that recently, yeah? Huh? Yeah, doing. Sorry, I missed the call again. Yeah. Yeah, on the live there. <laughs> yeah, there's no scene. But, uh, but I got the message. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Uh-huh. Yeah, I can ask his mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dagger whip, dagger whip. Cool. All right, yeah, man. Later. So I seen Caricom. Can we, can we will look at that piece after? Yeah, we could look at it. We could look at it. I'm not sure what we're going to do with it. But we could look at it. Two reasons why entrepreneurs should get insurance are to protect business from any future loss to a possible event, reduce the risk of the business being damaged. Well, I'm not sure that they will actually reduce the risk of the business being damaged. Yeah? The business can still get damaged if you have insurance, but you can reduce the risk that you will suffer unnecessarily or excessively because if you have insurance, you can be compensated. So I understand what you're saying. It's just that I'm not sure your articulation was the best one in terms of the last part of the question there, um, but that's what we had to work on, right? Articulation. All right, guys. Um, Zoe, look at copy 2018. Me? Yeah. All right, no problems. Okay, so we're going again. All right, list four marketing activities. So I think, now I have the four pieces of marketing, right? That's, isn't that the marketing mix though? So the marketing mix is different from marketing activities. Anybody have any thoughts on that? What are the marketing activities or marketing mix? Right. Yeah, 2018. That's question four. So I know marketing mixes the four P's. So I see in cough drops in market research. So oh, where can I get multiple research, choice? I'm not sure, boy. That one hard to find. Market research, pricing, market research, pricing, pricing packaging, packaging yeah. and branding, branding sales and sales promotion. promotion. But price, but promotion and, and packaging, 
So say, okay, so the four P's are price, product, promotion, and place. And they often say packaging is the fifth P, right? I don't know if they stop saying that they stop telling you guys that. Um, but the research is a market. Okay, I don't mind market. No, don't, don't lose it. Don't, I want to look at that. All right? If I have students who does cram and pass POV, yes, Shalini, that people do cram and pass everything. All night design. All night. If all they want, that's all their business. I go and sleep by half past. You like staying up late and cramming and studying. Yeah, that's not you. Wow, all right. Well, let's deal with that. Mo Lillian. Hey, Mo, what's going on? Yeah, different, different. All right, okay, cool. So let's let's talk about that very quickly. Let me see if I just jot down some stuff. I know I was working on some things here. All right, so let me, um, I'm going to put a page break there, guys. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, that's a little too much. Zoom out a little bit. All right, cool. So let's take that out. Okay, so we were saying, this is for part A, list four marketing activities, right? Okay, so list four marketing activities. All right, so one, so we said, yeah, sure, no problem. All right, so market research was one. What was the next one? Pricing. Pricing. All right. Pricing. Uh, see someone saying advertising. Advertising. So maybe marketing activities could be based off of the four Ps. Right, whatever you need to do with your marketing, it could be set on a marketing activity. That, that sounds reasonable to me. So it come like I am cramming at this point. We should need to be careful about our cramming because it could, it could displace other things. You know. So have one, promotion. All right, so promoting. Product development, I like that one. Product development. Distribution. Distribution. All right, okay. Distribution. But you see, distribution is place, eh? And I don't want to conflate marketing activities and marketing mix. But to me, a marketing mix is, is the, the implementation of the four Ps. So How much do we you use? Yeah. Uh huh. No, 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 not as far as I know. What do you want? That's what you're not know, saying? Price, product, promotion, please. Right, that's the four P's, that's the marketing mix. Public relations. I make sure they spell properly. Yeah? Sometimes somebody leave all these, leave all the LA, have public relations. So be careful. All right, cool. Distributing. I think I have distributing there. Yes, marketing mix is with the four P's. All right, cool. All right, so I think we have four. Let's not spend too much time unnecessarily. Outline two elements of the traditional marketing mix. So remember, I was talking about marketing mix, right? So outline, and for four marks, that means two marks each. All right, so we're going to outline two elements nah. Nah. Uh, of the traditional marketing mix. Marketing mix. All right, so traditional marketing mix. Price, product, promotion, and place. So price, product, pro. Yep. Promotion, place. Price, place. Okay, place and price. So <clears throat> let's talk about, let's go in reverse. Let's talk about place. When they talk about place with regards to marketing, what are they talking about specifically? Not just where you sell your products, but how you get them there. Place has to do with distribution, right? So this has to do with the distribution of goods to the consumer, right? So the selection of the correct channel or channels of distribution. Distribution um, is essential to successful delivery of value. I feel like I said plenty there without saying enough. <laughs> Product is an item, oh, that was the fridge. Good infrastructure. Marketing mix. I'm not sure about that environment. 
That's the marketing activities or mix. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't come back to that one. I'm silly, man. Give me, give me a second, right? Okay, so please, this has to be right. The selection of the correct channels is essential. All right. So um, for example, um, yeah. I just given extra information. So when you guys have to apply it, right, you will be able to do such. Anybody know number 307, 8303? I see a missed call. I don't know if it was GO. Okay, all right. Oh, art or HSB? HSB. Oh, you said he was coming. Well, like, okay. 8303. <laughs> you forget he had the exam? Wow. All right, for example, um, human and social biology, right? Um, for example, um, a company might choose um, manufacturer to consumer if they wish to eliminate the quote-unquote middleman or they may choose to just again again all over this phone thing hello okay cool yeah. Hello? Oh. Hello? Hi, good day. Yes? Yes, everything is up and working. I I actually had to adjust a couple of settings in the um the streaming software and it, it everything is actually working very well. I've been stream yeah, streaming since about ten o'clock and no interruptions, no drop frames, nothing. Yes. Thank you very much to you too, and you have a good day too. All right, bye bye. All right, well, as an example of good marketing, they're following up on your customers. All right, Flo came to replace the um, modem yesterday, and they call in to make sure everything good. Hashtag leave me alone. You disqualifying the individuals or the maths. Um, I don't know what's going on with the maths. Somebody's asking. Uh, I'm waiting to for I hear something on the news. All right, or they make sure to distribute um, to. Wholesalers, wow. yeah. <laughs> then to retailers. Once again, it's just me brain vomiting here. You don't have to write down all this, right? Um, then to um, end consumers. Yeah, this is fine. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Okay. Um, flow is garbage. Well, I use them for the past few years. More Lillian says she's not doing overmatch. You forget everything. You can't forget everything. How you go do that? Go do that. All right, next. Um, somebody talking about price. What is price? How much you charge the customer? Right, the cost of the good. Right. So price is the cost of the good um, to the end consumer. Right. Uh, the price should. Sorry. The cost of the good. Sold. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. All right. The price should allow the company to cover the cost of production and distribution and earn a reasonable profit. Right. I think that's enough for that. You can't charge them more than it's worth. How much you good is worth plus your markup. Monetary value of a product, very good. Promotion is how you promote your product to a target market. All right, good day. I'm going to come back to that one just now. I'll do that next. But let's just round off price. So all those things are valid, right? So I have monetary value of a product. How much you good is worth plus the markup. The markup is the profit. The extra you add on to the cost. Right, and you can't charge them more than what it's worth. Well, you see, Kevin, that's, that's an interesting thing you said. He says you can't charge them more than it's worth, but who gets to determine what it is worth? Right? I think different people have different, um, what is the word, beliefs or, or, or assessments of the worth of a product. Right? For example, some of, some of you guys, like when you were small, if you have smaller cousins now, um, they're like, I don't know if they still like this thing called Shopkins. Yeah, as a thing still. Outside. Right. And those things are expensive, right? But if you look at the cost, yeah, if you look at the cost of manufacturing these things, it's not much, right? So the worth of the product is subjective, all right? So I, I like that comment, right? Yeah. 
so you can see actually really print for the whole Caribbean before June 7 for maths. Um, yeah, I think they can, they did it already. In 2008, we had to sit over the math exam in Trinidad because it leaked and there was a, there was a second math paper, yeah? But of course, sorry, what? They had phones back then, that's only 11 years ago, so yes, they had phones. They had mobile phones since the 90s. Just, no, no, it's, it, it was that somebody in the ministry broke one of the seals on the boxes or whatever and sold the paper to people down here. What? Yeah. And yes, they had phone cams back then, and even though it wasn't the best, it was still visible. Like yesterday, somebody sent me pictures of the, the ad maths exam after it was finished. After? After, right. So uh, that's making sure CX, you don't think of leaking papers, right? So, but the thing is, I was able to make out, like, all the... Did they watch your stream? I don't know, right? Out of the 12 pictures I got, only like two or three were really legible, right? So it, it depends, right? Anyhow, Blackberry back then, yeah, boy. Hi, sir, can we have access to the lab after they finish? Yes, you can, right? Blackberry, 2008, maths and English leak, they had to write it back. And CAPE Accounting Unit 2. They have, um, they have not made any pronouncement as to if anybody has to do over maths, so please don't panic. Focus on what you have in front of which is POB. All right, so we talk about price, what about promotion? Well, somebody said how you're promoting it, but we don't want to use back the same word promote to explain what promotion means. Advertising is a form of promotion. So it, what does promotion do? What, when you say promote, what do you... It does what? It increases. It increases, yes. Revenue by... Right, so, so to promote something, like for example... Um, what? It increases interest. Interest, right. It, enha it increases, it, it is an attempt to increase the sales volume by, by making people more aware of your products by promote, by, I don't want to use what you promote, by, by increasing interest in it with various tactics, right? Such as pairing up goods together or like, like um, value packs or competitions. You can win trips, you can win laptops, you can win cars, that kind of stuff. So basically, just basically focusing attention on your product. Um, increasing interest in it by arousing consumers' interest with different forms of prizes and that kind of stuff. Promotion, attracting interest of the target market, making consumers aware of the product, attractive display, getting consumers familiar, right? How a business advertise their goods to the target market, right? Activity designed to boost sales, promotion, King Minor, right? Attracting customers to, by advertising, like Omega XL promotion for the Honda City. All right. Math's naturally hard. I know what naturally. I think spelling naturally hard too sometimes, right? Celebrity endorsement, right? Okay, so promotion is... Honda City is one of the vehicles they have now. It's like a kind of lower model of Cordo Civic or something. Yeah. All right. Can be considered promotion. Yes. All right. So promotion is any activity um, geared towards increasing... The public, publics, I don't know how I have the, the right, publics or target market. I think target market is a, is a nicer term to use there, target market. Awareness. Awareness. Okay. Yeah? Product. By. Mm -hmm. Right, so. Increasingly, the, the public's or the target market's awareness in the product by arousing their interest to various tactics, right? Such as, um, so somebody said celebrity endorsements. Um, what was the other one? Matt's Dotish, D O A T I S H. Oh, Lord of mercy. Oh, I have, I have an uprising here about doing over the mats. All they did, did not say you have to do over mats. Calm down. Right, calm down, relax, relax thyself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, well, right now, we, right now we are POV, we will, we will focus on that. All right, um, celebrity endorsements, offering prizes, um, cross promotions. All right, I like that cross promotions, BOGO answers. I had, I have to check that laptop. Because I was looking on it, this one for it, and I couldn't find it. So it had to be that it didn't transfer when I was crossing and stuff. Okay, cool. All right. Buy one. Um, come on. Buy one. Bite? All right. Buy. 
buy one get one half off yeah actually i wouldn't go far i say i could get a new boots all right okay let gary promote my product what's your product boy <laughs> so do i teach econ too i will be doing a couple of econ live streams next week once this this lovely streaming internet holds out right probably both days before the exam 10 to 12 and 1 to 3 right so it'll probably take the same format going through papers talking out stuff making notes all right okay let's just do product very quickly because it's already 140 and we want to check out the jan 2019 as well plus that question five where what can the government do to, to, about overpopulation all right so i want to hear i want to hear all you product is an item that is produced or supplied in the meeting the wants or needs of a particular it i don't do it erica but i have someone who works here with me who does it if you want it i can talk to him and see if he's available right message me on sorry facebook youtube or instagram to remind me probably instagram right you want to say hi to someone you can watch here wait <laughs> yeah they can see it, it, it has a little delay so like in a oh, lot of seconds yeah all oh right. my god look how gross he looks look how gross oh my lord have mercy yeah that was zoe so hmm. social studies come in here yes sir, it all right message me on instagram to remind me cough drop says hi is that is cough drop here is it hi too cough drop, cough drop. i don't or can you use these i don't know I well everybody's saying hi all right product product is um an item a good or a service all right which a company provides for the <laughs> Goldfish boy, not tasty. I'm, I'm glad you, you, you added that, not tasty. Tangible things that are produced, bought or sold, right? Now, a product is either a good or a service, so be careful. Product is a good or service that is needed by, right, right. Purpose of satisfying, um, satisfying the target market needs or wants. All right, I think we're okay there. <clears throat> Sorry. All right, shall we proceed? All right, I'm, I'm just, right, cool. I am just a goldfish. All right, cool. <laughs> you know, goldfish, I have a fellow called Lee Evans. When you get a chance, look up Lee Evans for second memory. Wait, a, oh, yeah. Lee yeah, Lee Evans, yeah. He's a stand-up comedian. He's actually, he was in a few movies, actually. Um, but yeah, I, I found him brilliant. Um, Product is a good or service that is used to, to earn revenue by satisfying needs and wants of the individual. Okay, I'm okay with that. Is a, a Spanish goldfish to the answer? C. Si. All right. So you want me to print it out for you? Oh, yeah. Which one are you copying now? Okay, that's good. That's good? All right, cool. Uh, what, what, what? Be yourself. Right. Um, Describe each of the following methods of promoting sales. Public relations, sales promotions. All right, so C part one, C part two. All right, C part one. So public relations. All right, let me hear Liam. Hey Liam, you Googling public relations somewhere there? Or we're on? You're watching more IT crowd? Oh, Liam, one day. Well, we will check him later, right? Public yeah. relations. Yeah. As Zessa goldfish, you know. All right. Ale goldfish. I don't know. Ale pescado de oro. And, and pescado is fish? Yeah. Right? And oro is gold? Yeah, actually, that's not sure. Well, public, what is public relations? Not sure? Yeah, boy. I'm not sure myself. A little rusty with that. HR, the man say no. Public relations definition. A communication process that a good relationship between a business and a bar. Okay. How do you calculate GDP? GDP, you have you have three methods: output, expenditure, and revenue. All right. Output is easy. We'll come back to that one in from us. All right. But GDP is the total value of all the well goods and services produced within a country's land and maritime boundaries within a given. Okay. The professional maintenance of a favorable public image by a company or other organization or a famous person. The state of the relationship between a company or other organization or famous and the public. All right, so the professional maintenance of a favorable public image. Right? Oh, so that's like, um, that's 
Like you said, using arms, so like we can endorse man. Right, so you could do stuff like press releases. Yeah. You could have like well, press conferences. Yeah. You could do media releases. All right. Yeah. All right, cool. I like that one. Right. So public relations is the establishment. That's the establishment and maintenance of a dialogue slash relationship between the between a company and the public at large um, activity used by the business to build up a positive image in the minds of its consumers I like that one public relations goldfish is saying is the way organizations companies and individuals communicate with the public and the media public relations is about disparating distributing information about the firm with aims of improving public image and encouraging consumers to buy its product. Basically, it's about conversing with the public about a business or good or service. Yes, all those things are very correct. Thank you. Part of a marketing that makes sure that ensures a business in a positive light by government, society, and consumers. Erica, very good. All right, so, right, the establishment and maintenance of a dialogue or between a company and the public at large. Um, this, right, can be done um, via such activities as press and press conferences, conferences and um, media releases, right? Where this class is located in Trinidad? I am located in Diego Martin, right? Um, online, online media, social media sites, such as Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. I don't, I don't know if you all will know what... LinkedIn. Right, LinkedIn is, is more for professionals. Yeah. And remember, you had, to, you had to put yourself in that context. It's not, it's not just about what you know, it's about what everybody knows. Oh, right. All right, I have a LinkedIn account. I barely check it. I have like, I open my phone and I see in, I see like 99 plus messages. Like, whatever, I don't... Did you know my space Really? What? Wow. Chris, did you ask No, I did not. Do you have it? All right, no. I just heard about it. Yeah, how do, how do I get that? Do that when you and they go to? All right, cool. All right, well, you can message me on um, on Instagram and we could liaise in case you want to do the econ. If you want to come here, whatever. Thank you, Erica. I appreciate that. All right. And yes, you could you could get to know somebody even though you don't meet them physically. That's such as the one of the advantages of technology. All right. Is it true your bosses look into your social media? Um, when Tinder, no, I wouldn't use Tinder for, for public relations. That would be a very odd thing to do. Um, yes, sometimes, I mean, they, they might do a very, a very basic Google, right? Cough drop. Th thanks, cough drop. I appreciate that, right? Yeah, they could do a very basic Google search. Your employers and you go for, for jobs. Yeah. So you always want to make sure that you're not tagged in any photos that you might regret being tagged in. All right. Like yeah, if, if it's if it's a, if it's a public profile, yeah, you know, if it's private, I mean, I don't know how much, I don't I don't know how ethical it would be to try and hack the profile. I don't think they would they would do something like that. So always be careful about what is what you post and what is posted about you, all right? Because it could come back to haunt you. All right, guys. So let's go. Um, we're going again. So that was public relations. What was it on sales promotions? Yeah. Describe each of the following methods of promoting sales. All right. Isa, 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 not sure how to pronounce, Mandal, all right, you don't owe me, huh? Right, so, um, sales promote, now it said, hold on, eh? let me just take a look at the question because I feel like I didn't, where is the business can generate the most sales, so this is where the business can generate the most sales from, okay, that is quite possible, describe each of the following methods of promoting sales, okay, so sales promotions, um, can include, well, I feel like I, I talked about that here already, right? So I feel like I kind of covered it there. Anybody, anybody on the live think we have to lower any price of a demanded good? All right. Okay, yeah. Yeah, just, just see, see above. Answer. Um, 4B3. All right, cool. 
I just studied the Ehok textbook. The whole textbook, you mean? Everything came in the test. Yeah, boy, every, that, that, I heard the, the topics that came, it was balance sheet, partnership, limited companies, basic double entry with, um, yeah. was it? <laughs> and trial balance? And I received some payments account? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Capital account. Right, and the um the statement of retained earnings, they brought that. But that was that was just a fancy name for the appropriation account. Oh no, I, I figured that out. Okay, well I'm glad. <laughs> I'm honestly feeling cute, might get a one tomorrow. <laughs> Erica says sales promotions are methods used to induce or promote the market to purchase a good or service through short term incentives. I like that. I like that. All right. All right. Uh, methods. Uh huh. Was that? Why? The market to purchase a good or service through short-term incentives such as price drops, um, BOGO offers, celebrity, and Wait, Chris, is it yeah? Chris, yeah, mark there anymore? I don't know about that, I don't know where you hear that from, but I don't know how else they would mark, to be honest. If it was an um, offering prizes such as trips abroad, Cause. <laughs> All right. Ordinary shares. Study most of the topics for the exam, except company accounts, but I said. All right, good. Yeah, the night before we did budgeting and cash projections, real thinking, hey, that coming is the first year. And the tech come. Chops. Take a big, a big chops. For that dotishness. Anyhow, sorry. Um, <laughs> Preference here, Kim. All right, Kevin and Mala have been thinking about setting up a cell phone and accessories business together. They find the term retailing. retailing. Retailing is when they take a tail from some dog and put the next dog, they retail it. No? Wrong type of retail? You know, for that? <laughs> Changing the tail on a dog <laughs> or putting back a tail. Today, of all days, are there options in, in POB? No, options? Sorry, no options. No options, right? It's just one to five. Yeah, I think most exams have no more options. All right? Social studies has options still. Okay. So, yeah, no, I don't think there are any options. There's just five questions. Do it. All right. So, retailing. Let's get a proper definition. Mm. Okay, so buying, buying goods to resell them to end customers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the buying and reselling of goods, um, specifically to end customers, not not to other, not necessarily to other retailers, right? Because you could have wholesalers buying goods from companies, from manufacturers wholesale, and then selling them to retailers. All right, retailing is selling goods in small quantities. Resale of goods by breaking bulk, that's as wholesaling. Jaden Perryman says, "Oh, Zoya and Jordan." <laughs> <laughs> File bus or not? I don't know. Zoe says hi. James. Oh, yeah, Zoe says hi. And Joe Roman, he says, oh, Jaden. Oh. Oh, 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 all right. Oh. <coughs> Joe Roman, he says, Zoe, real best boy. Anyway, we get off. Track. <laughs> well, yeah, Zoe bus not laughing. It's how work to do. Retailers do it too. Actually, yeah, you might be, you might be right, Nicholas. That's, that's actually a good point. All right, so retailing. Um, you look at the definition of Liam. Yeah. Is the selling of goods retailing, right? Um, to end consumers, um, usually in small quantities. Buying goods in bulk to resell to customers in small quantities. All right. If you're coming to do work, and by work I mean actual work like CXE subjects. Well, you have an hour. <laughs> Buying up goods to 
um, four to six, I actually have to form four maths people. Oh. If you all want to stay and do work, it's fine. I just won't be able to do a live. Yourselves. Um, Ten consumers. So what time are you finishing? I am finishing. Um, I have class up till half past eight. Right, but I won't be doing any more POB and lives past three quarter past three because I have another class. I have two classes to teach after that. I'm not sure how how well I can manage doing a live plus doing those classes. Sorry. Sorry. Um, I'm considering it. One second, get one second. Make sure the live stream stays. It's, it's not. Yeah, it's not. Um, like like buffering and sticking on it. Yeah. All right. Buy in bulk is wholesaling. Um, yeah, usually wholesaling is where you buy goods in bulk to sell to retailers. All right. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. You all can stay outside here too because actually in that room, Dwayne will be there with somebody else. So you all can stay in the corner because it's only going to be two people here, four to six, and then one person, half six to half eight. That's how I was able to type up most of the math solutions last week because she was just here doing accounts and I was just here doing maths. Yeah, it's on Facebook. Actually, I have a hard copyright. I have a hard copyright here. Yeah, All right, cool. All right, sorry guys, we're getting, we're getting sidetracked. My, my apologies. Describe three suitable types of retail outlets that Kevin and Marla could consider setting up. All right, let me hear all about this because I... Types of retail outlets, I'll let Rusty on that one. All right, three types of retail outlets. Ah. All right. Is that like a, like convenience stores? Um. All right. Online online store supermarkets, but it but it's talking specifically about um selling cell phone and accessories business together, right? Retail outlets. Um. I think somebody says online stores, uh, online store, e-commerce. I think I could agree with that one because that one seems to be very relevant, especially because it's phone stuff, right? So an online retail store. Retail store. Um, let, let's just list them first and we'll go back and explain it, right? Uh, what about a kiosk at a mall, right? Because I mean, I don't know how many of you guys live in Trinidad, but like if you go to West Mall or other malls, they have little kiosks like here in the, in the walkway itself. And those kiosks sell those things. Um, Rattans, <laughs> telemarketing, um, telemarketing boy. Yeah, you have to describe it. Six marks. So I'll leave in some room. Shopping mass, shopping mall, kiosk, cell phone accessory store. Right. Now that would be the type of store, but is it the type of retail outlet? Um, a mall. They're gonna build a whole mall, boy, Nicholas. I mean, they'll be still in the mall, but they, they probably will have to have a, they might have a store in the mall. So online retail store. Oh, so we could do brick and mortar. Brick and mortar? Yeah, that, that's what they call, okay, like houses are built with brick and mortar, unless it's a wooden house. Then it wouldn't be built with that, right? <laughs> okay, so when they put the bricks down, they have the kind of cement they put between the bricks, right? They call that mortar. Okay. I think. Mail order. Mail order could be one too, right? Yeah, M A I L, not M A L E. I like you ordering men through the mail. You know something? <laughs> I had to see part two still, boy. I see part one. I might do a binge watch. I'm a girlfriend. She like she like Keanu Reeves. I like just just watch it, please. Why does she like Keanu Reeves? Cause she's like this in every movie he's in. They're like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you killed my dog. You know. So I don't, I don't I don't mind him, but you know what? Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Brick and mortar. Brick and mortar is what is used to describe um. Physical buildings, right? Be mobile. Oh, somebody said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Huh? Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. Sorry, you were saying. They might. So online retail stores. Mm -hmm. They can't. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Uh huh. Mm. All right. 
Yeah, well, so always, always take that kind of advice with a, with a pinch of salt, yeah? Because you don't want to underprepare. I rather overprepare. All right, so online retail store. They said describe. So setting up a website on the internet as opposed to wherever else you can set up a website. I don't know. On the internet. Internet. Um, to take orders and arranging for physical delivery with another entity who provides that service. Um, supermarket for phones. So, Phil Behold, a Blue Diamond, after this, uh, within the next hour and 50 minutes, I had to stop um, because I have, a, I have a math class. How long do you lie for, sir? Sure. Chavin, Warrell, Chavin? It has two years. I'm not sure what I'm Sorry, Ariel. I don't mean to butcher your name. All right. Um, for the next hour and 15 minutes. All right. Um, kiosk at mall. Um, this is a small booth that will allow them to um, have access to a mall's foot traffic, right? So basically everybody has to walk along the hallways in the mall, right? And once you walk in the hallway, you're bound to pass this place, not so? So once you are placed there, they have to pass you, right? So this is a small booth that will allow them to have access to a mall's foot traffic and so like lower. Well, well, once again, people usually walk kind of on the ends. So the middle is usually underpopulated. So that's why they gave people access to set a booth in the middle in the first place. Because the mall is hardly ever so crowded where you have to take up the whole space. And in any case, you have your escalators, you have your stairs, you have your phone, no kind of fanciness. So the middle is kind of where no one walks, really and truly. All right? Um, at a, you never know. At a lower rent. All right. Um, so outlet refers to a type of business. Yes. So I bake chicken nuggets for lunch and like it. I bake properly. You're, you're sick. Now, boy, goldfish. Do do that. Andrews, one time. Goldfish say bake chicken nuggets for lunch and like it. I bake properly. You sure you, you sure wish chicken nuggets? Was it not fish nuggets? No, because they're thinking eating your own kind of cannibalism. <laughs> do do that. All right. Cool. Brick and mortar. Right. A physical. On a roll like butter, you understand? Like a dinner roll. All right. A physical building um, um, can be easily accessed. If you say get off button, uh -huh. when you jump set, then you can... I could probably do, do like a, um, a little right, widget or something. Salmonella says hi. Yeah, boy. Salmonella? Well, the, the, the person who didn't yeah, cook the chicken nuggets. Like Scrape, you know. All right, cool. Physical building can be easily accessed by customers and allow for storage and display of merchandise. All right. Okay. Buy that price mart. <laughs> well, price mart sells good stuff, eh? I buy stuff there too. All right, guys. <clears throat> so. Hold on. You're talking about like, a, like, like the Apple fruit or you're talking about like, I, like an iPhone or anything? <laughs> Oh, okay. Who's that? Price Mark? Price Mark. I think I've seen like MacBooks and stuff there for sale. That's yeah, but not the phones. phones. No, I, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, they start this one phone, but they don't have phones. Oh, okay. I'm not going to ask they sell flip phones, boy. Wow. Yeah, R.I.P. Steve Jobs. Yeah, boy. Okay. All right. Um, let's check out question five one time. We have a little, a little more than an hour again. I'll, I'll go past time. All right, so let's go back here. 20, all right, question five. Well, oh, good, all right, things, how much for iPhone? It depends on the iPhone, boy, Nick. It could cost 10, it could cost less. I pay about seven something for mine last year. All right, state one major function of each of the following economic institutions. CARICOM. I don't know what. Yeah, I. Woo. 
A type of insurance could be endowment and whole life, even as for assurance. I, I don't know offer and I don't know that one. I'm real sorry. Sorry, say again. Okay, so to allow for regional integration. Okay. Um, of Caribbean countries. Okay. Quick skip for me. Yeah, I agree with you. Sorry. You have objectives of CARICOM? Yeah. All right, rest, rest them on my chest. Then. To develop links between yeah. the nations of the Caribbean. To develop links yeah. between the nations of the Caribbean yeah. and? Present a common view. Present a common view. Yeah. Of what? I don't know. <laughs> CARICOM gives you right to establishment in any CARICOM country. That, I like it also. Uh-huh. All right. You see, I, I'm trying not to conflate or confuse it with. Uh, okay, our next one. Somebody else saying to promote economic integration. I I agree with that, right? So I try. I just try not to confuse it with the CSME, the Caribbean Single Market and Economy, right? Which is which allows for people to move between the Caribbean islands and to take up jobs in different Caribbean islands and the free flow of capital. I also think reduced reduced um taxes and tariffs, um so. Because my, my, my initial thing here was to promote trade, but then part two is asking about the World Trade Organization, right? Because obvi obviously that one is to promote trade and better relations between different countries in the world. Oh, well, right? you can see um, a major function for CARICOM is to, uh -huh. to improve to economics. Improve mm -hmm. the relationship between each. To improve, the, relation, to improve the, the relations between different Caribbean countries. I like that one. Um, to create a link for distribution of goods among member states in order for Caribbean countries to trade their products. I agree with that one. That's a nice one. Thanks for that one. Trading among member countries without tariff. Good one. Isn't CARICOM and CSME used interchangeably in this case? I can't do one um, Erica boy, Erica Gill, sorry. Um, I'll, had a, I'll had a mull over that one because I don't want to say yes or no off the bat because you could have a point there. But I don't want to say yes without really digging a bit more into that. Anybody could shed some light on that? No. She says, isn't... <laughs> right, CSC CS, CS, was a single currency. They want a single Caribbean currency. Goldfish, goldfish going strong. Uh -huh. You gone? All right. You got to go up to this for anything? Yeah, all right. Yeah, we're doing a one to three and a four to six because those boys have econ till 12 and then we'll do a four to six or maybe six to or whatever. Yeah. I Okay. So I have to stay. I will have to leave for tomorrow. Tomorrow is Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. Yeah. Daniel will be eighteen this year. Yeah. He's the only one who makes the karma. Yeah. He makes it himself. His dad makes it. Yeah. But it have it have karma if you want. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay, guys. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so, the, so we had plenty of stuff for CARICOM there. We had to create a link for distribution for goods among member states in order for them to trade products, um, trade among members without tariff, improve economic development in member states, um, promote economic integration and, and harmony within the, within the region. Okay, and World Trade Organization. Um, I, I think with World Trade Organization, that is to promote trade between different countries and, of course, to enhance relationships overall. Because, of course, I mean, trying to trade without a relationship is a bit of a, a, an exercise in frustration. Yeah. All right? Right to establish means that once you are a CARICOM country, you can establish a business, for example, in Trinidad, freely, of course, through government regulations, like acquiring a license. Okay, thank you very much for the clarification, Erica. I appreciate it. Um, and I think you have a good point there. So what she's saying is that with CARICOM, you, um, somebody from, let's say, Barbados or Jamaica could establish a, um, a company in Trinidad without jumping through too many hoops. They might just have to go through what, what, what Trinidad have to go through. Yeah. All right. Isa, Isa, sorry. World trade has to do with the whole world, right? Um, they will have a bit less scope in terms of what, they, what their objectives are relative to CARICOM because they, they, they mightn't try to promote as much as many things, like the regional integration, that kind of stuff. But they might try to just promote, like I said, trade. But I mean, integration might be part of it. 
But honestly, like I said, I don't know these things offhand because there's a lot to know, and really and truly I should if, I, if I'm <laughs> doing these kind of lives. I could go to the solution and sell doubles. That, that could be a good idea, Goldfish. Goldfish, talk to Nicholas. Nicholas, I'm going to come and sell doubles by you, boy. Free movement of labor. Somebody saying for World Trade Organization. What year is this? 2018 May. All right, scrolling down. Outline one way in which governments can alleviate each of the following economic problems. Outline, now hold on, eh? it's six marks and there are three items, which means two marks each. So ideally what you want to do is you want to explain for now, there are only three lines here, so it can't be anything overly technical, overly complicated, like how I like to type long. I could swim there unless you salt water kill me. It, it might, it might. Well, freshwater fish can't live in salt water. All right, so to promote trade between the more developed countries and less developed countries. Or for World Trade Organization. Okay, that's a good one. Like comparative and absolute advantage. All right. Okay, so unemployment. How can a government relieve or alleviate? The alleviate means to lessen or to reduce unemployment. Grant subsidies provide more jobs. Okay, so those are very broad. So what, you, so what we could say is um, providing subsidies reduces the costs. A subsidy is literally money, money that the government gives to companies. So if the government subsidizes, it means like um, they could pay part, you could use the money from the government to help pay your workers. So, <laughs> well, the, the government actually subsidizes um, gas, right? There's a, there's a national gas subsidy which they've been reducing with each successive budget. Right? So that's why we're paying more and more for gas as time goes by. Right? FDI, foreign direct investment. Yeah. Yeah, we try we try in Abdullah. All right. For gas, yeah boy, for gas. Um, so unemployment. So you said create more jobs. Um, the answer, that is correct. You just have to explain a bit more. So for example, in Trinidad a few years ago, there was a big construction thrust, like downtown where they have the whole waterfront, part, um, waterfront, whatever, right? That, those tall buildings, right? There was, uh, that was what, early 2004, five, the government campus and then. Yeah, so there was a time, there was real plenty of construction going on. And that, of course, would provide employment. Uh, I know that they've closed on Petrotrim, but they're supposed, they, they, they allegedly have some plan to open some yeah. port. Yeah. You walk over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you talking about? They're talking about unemployment right. and how to create jobs. Like, right? So what I'm, sorry? Yeah, for carnival. Right, so you, right, so you have temporary employment, right? Unemployment, developing tertiary and secondary industries, which will increase job opportunities in these sectors. Processing why industries. Why, why they can't be smart? Nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. All right. Right, we come back to that. We, we, do, we didn't with um, overpopulation just now, but that's a good answer. Right, so unemployment, you could create more jobs. I, I would also say you could try and develop the, the education um, sector. Because what that will do is that will create, yeah. it's supposed to create more well-educated people, which will, of course, help with the labor supply. But the problem is unemployment means you have more supply than you have demand. So you can't just increase supply. If you increase supply without increasing demand, you're going to have worse unemployment. So you have to increase the demand. They, they're trying to, we're trying to discuss ways to alleviate unemployment, right? So what... Yeah, so, yeah. I might have to retract that one <laughs> because that works more on the supply side. You're creating more supply, yeah. right? Now, unemployment is where you have a difference between the number of people employable and the actual number of people employed. Mm -hmm. So the problem is if you have the number of people employed could be lower than the actual number of employable people. So that causes unemployment. That, that's what unemployment is. So you have less people employed than available. So if you go and create a better education system, Actually, right, so if you create it, what could happen is people could be a bit more, you can, you can put a slant on the system where it has a more entrepreneurial thrust. So for example, in Trinidad, you have um, stuff like Nedco, you have the business incubator, you have some other, um, some other, what's the word boy? Some other entities that promote, like there's this, this thing called planting seeds, I don't know if any of you guys would have seen it on, like, on TV or in magazines, right? And what they do is they kind of, um, they go about, Almost like Shark Tank. You all know what Shark Tank is, right? And they kind of provide young seed capital. Sorry? Yeah, young entrepreneurs, right? 
right? Promote FDI. Okay, so Nicholas is saying promote FDI. FDI stands for Foreign Direct Investment, and he is correct. If if the government itself does not have sufficient capital to invest and to develop the infrastructure and these things to help create employment, what they could do is they could look to other countries to bring in, yeah, bring in bring in their in their, their capital right via foreign direct investment, right? So they, so other companies, for example, let's say Microsoft, they could say, well, look, Microsoft, we have some land here. You all could you all could put a, um, a, a headquarters down here or whatever the cases or Amazon look. Microsoft has a um, has a place down here. Yes, that's correct. Um, Mokarapo, yeah. yeah, I think so. I don't know if it closed. So wait, unemployment is is in this case means there are jobs that no one is employed. Actually, well, that could be that could be a kind of a form of unemployment too. But we were, we were going with the other way. I, I was trying to retract what I was saying for that that one then. All right. All right. So unemployment. So we talked about subsidies to lessen the cost, the burden of employ of salaries on employers. Which, yeah, correct. Um, we talk, well, we just talked about foreign direct investment. Amazon should come in to be honest. It's true, right? Um, we talked about trying to develop the, the infrastructure. So trying for the government to develop certain industries, secondary and tertiary, um, as well as processing industries. Okay, all right. So that's unemployment. Overpopulation. So what, outline one way in which governments can alleviate overpopulation. So what is overpopulation? <laughs> yeah. So what is overpopulation? Right. Right. So, so overpopulation is where you basically have too many mouths to feed, yeah. right? Or the population is growing at a at an unprecedented rate or a rate that the supply side cannot keep purge. up with. You should have a purge, I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. So. Right, so a few people here have said promoting family planning, goldfish bowl, free condoms. That might not work all the time, eh? goldfish, just be careful with that. Anyhow, so family planning, um, education is also a very important thing because you see, if you don't have proper education about reproductive health and these kind of things, things happen, right? So if you, if you educate people, even when, when they are educated, things will still happen. So yeah, access to family planning. Um, hmm, what else, boy? Well, I mean, we, I, I really want to touch the whole abortion debate right now because that seems to be a very hot topic. So I, I go in there, all right? Sex ed class. Yeah, that, that, that could be something that could be of, of value, right? Um, yes, China, China, China had for a long time a one child per family policy. Um, I, I believe they lifted that within the past couple of years because I think they realized they had an aging population. Yeah, and they had... Yeah, that's what they were doing. They actually, yeah, they, they would terminate the girls. Wait, um, wait, wait, an, an aging population an aging. Yeah, is where you have, you, the birth rate falls. So what happens is instead of having like a fairly even distribution between deaths and births, you have a lot more deaths and people aging than you have young people growing up or, or young people or more births per year. So like every year, let's say there were, there were like 10,000 births and they dropped to five, they dropped to two, they dropped to 1,000. So instead of having 10,000 new people every year, you now have 1,000 new people every year. So the majority of your population, you have more old people than young people. So that's what's referred to as an aging population. And the problem there is that because of that, you now have a serious time limit for basically how long everybody's going to live, right? That's not the, the best phrasing, right? But what's going to happen is eventually people are going to be too old to work. And the number of people who are going to be young enough to work, it's going to be too much for them to do. So that's an, that's an issue. Right, make sure any legal. Oh Lord have mercy. Bring a disease to the country. You know this one. That that might be a good idea for a movie, a, a series on, on on Netflix or something. Wait, they just said make sure it's legal. That's obviously not a not something I would I would suggest. Um, Erica, promoting. Well, I read in one here promoting regional integration. Example: free movement of labor, encouraging our human resources to go work at um, other countries to work. Yeah. That's your. No, that's not me, that's Erica. Goldfish say ban the venues. Oh no, people stop that. We're not doing Yeah, we're not talking about that. That is not that's not good. That's not good. We're not we're not saying that. I'm gonna say genocide, Lord have mercy. People have mercy on the Venezuelans, they have it real hard in their country. Alright? We're not right? I go there. Cooking vibe. 
Who is cooking vibes? Who is cooking vibes? It's on the penalty as a niche. Yeah. Um, he, I think he's only been in the Okay. He, yeah, he used to have with him before the game with Steve. Mm-hmm. And he realized that he hired him and he was very like, I just like to them so already. And yeah. like worked and do hard work. And mm-hmm. so now from all of his work that he hired to run, it's yeah. like he's making a bit more money now. Like, yep. But I guess they also make money from Pepsi because the same time. Yeah. Plague. Providing pregnancy pills for women. So pills to help people get pregnant or to help them not get pregnant? King Minor. Anyhow. Okay, let's move on from that one because like I said, that one was a bit of a um <coughs> Emir. Shut- I think um, proper education, uh, access access to family planning services, whatever that might mean. Reducing the birth rate of the country, right? So the question is how that that is population control. So how are you going to reduce the birth rate? That's the question. Right. Right. Migration. What? Hold on. What is migration first of all? When people left in the country and going away, right? Where they are, they are, they are leaving the country to go to other places, right? Like actually, most of my friends gone, right? I have like two or three friends left in Trinidad, to be honest, right? Yeah, mostly people like I kind of grew up with just no, no longer here, and like I had some friends in the next year that was about four of them, three of them living in the states now, and the next one just said she got accepted to Canada for her residency. So all my friends from the next street gone, right? I left with two, like I said, two or three down here. Yeah, I'm an awesome guy. As in my girlfriend's son? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That is fine. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, so Emir said the movement of persons from one place to another can be internal or external. That is correct. How to alleviate right? migration? Right, so basically what we're saying is how do we stop? I think what they refer to here is what we call brain drain, where our prized human capital, the very bright people who have a lot of potential, go away. Build a wall. Build a wall. Okay, oh, okay, Liam Trump. I think planes can fly over walls. I don't know what to say. All right. Um, have a law where you must be a certain age to travel to a particular country. No, um, like when you grant scholarships, mm-hmm. and like in order to like pay for scholarships, you have to right. come down here and wait for a year. Okay. Right, well, there's the um, amount of years. Okay, so you are saying to prevent migration. Um, now, you see, the problem with that is that companies or entities away can pay off the government and still keep the people, right? So if you want people to stay, what are the, sorry, biggest problems in Trinidad right now? They don't have enough jobs when they, they feel that they right. have to their degree in. They right. feel like they don't have Yeah, you have, you have people graduated from, from the medical school. You have people as doctors who cannot get jobs. Yeah, because there's just no space for them, right? Um, so that's one. Why not tackle the core problem as to why people choose to migrate in the first place? So that's better employment opportunities. Good. Right. So that's what I was getting at. So that's what you guys were saying. Better employment opportunities. Um, the one I was going for, which I didn't, I didn't properly set up, was crime. Right. If you have a high rate of crime in, in this country, like for example, one of the same friends who I was talking about, who, who lives away now, he actually works at NASA. Right. We call him, we call him Rocket Man. So his, his mom is, is from Mayaro. Right. His dad is from Texas. So he's a part of a call. We're an Indian. Right? Anyhow, um, but his mom like will constantly, she's from here, but she will constantly bad talk to her dad. To the point where when, when he came down with his fiance, the girl was afraid to leave the house. Right? Because she thought like I had a shootout the night before, da, 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 da. Now, okay, that, yes, things like that happen, but they don't happen everywhere you go or all the time. You know? Yeah, true. That is correct. Right? Dwayne, but if you save this, yeah, it, 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 it is saved. To decrease migration, we can develop modern infrastructure such as roads, electricity, and housing, and also increase our social amenities. I think you want to A in front there, such as entertainment or sport. Erica, it's best you take this live, yes, because you have, the be- you have better answers than me. <laughs> right? More development in the country. Will she participate and she helping our people? Right? To get foreign currency due to the currency in their homeland being worth little or nothing. All right. Right. So, 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 so um, the one I will, well, I, there are a few here that I do like plenty, uh, a lot, but I think one of the best ones was um, addressing the core problems as to why people migrate, 
which is better employment opportunities, um, crime, poor infrastructure, <clears throat> corruption, right? Like, I mean, they, they, were, they were saying here in the, um, to get foreign currency to the currency, is that a good point? Um, is that why people, people migrate? Yeah, that's why, I guess that'd be a point why they migrate. So you could, you could try to address that too. But trying to address the, the, the currency situation, um, that, that's challenging. But it is a point. Better standard of living, I could agree with that. Better quality of living. All right. People normally migrate for a better life. If the government has opportunities, they might stay. That is correct. To make a life, right? Erica, yeah, Erica, do your thing, yo. There's no thing. I don't mind. Right? Because. <laughs> All right. Okay. So that was that. Next page. Economic dualism, boy. <laughs> Yeah, because Erica, you're giving real best answers. <laughs> so, so you can make a live and I will join any comments. Right? Economic dualism basically is the, the, the existence in a country of a highly advanced portion of the population. Okay, it, I sound like I'm talking about like robots and things. No, you have sectors of the economy, a highly advanced sector and a sector that is very much not highly advanced. So you might have like parts of the country who's... Yeah, parts of the country are first world, parts of the country third world, right? So that's what economic dualism is. So part of the country is advancing, and the other part is just not doing that at all. So like South and up here. You think South not advanced, or you think up here not advanced? Yeah. South is advanced. Oh ho! When one sector is backward, the other is advanced. Economic dualism, most broadly defined, refers to the coexistence of two or more economic systems. Today, it is most evident in the countries in the early stages of economic development. That's goldfish, yeah. Because ask those questions. I'm not seeing the questions. You're not seeing the questions? You see? Sorry, let's zoom in a little bit. Can you see them now? All right. Shania, economic dualism refers to when the economy of a country is divided into technologically advanced sectors and backward technologically deficit deficient sectors. All right. Part of the country is technologically advanced and one isn't. All right. Cool. You're not letting me pa type past two. Yeah, two hundred is the character limit. So type type the answer and then um type again. Yeah, Saddam, Saddam took offense. No, Saddam, he was saying that North is not as advanced as you guys are. That's what he was saying. Oh. All right. I wasn't saying you're not advanced. So don't get me wrong. I know all they're real advanced. All they have real thing. Real thing. All right. Okay. Um, so that's what economic dualism is. Outline two benefits of obtaining foreign direct investment. Letters. That's the character limit. Yeah. Outline two benefits. Now, didn't we talk about foreign direct investment a bit earlier? All right. Okay. So one one benefit of foreign direct investment is that it can be used to develop infrastructure. All right? Because well, hold on. What is foreign direct investment? That's when companies right from other countries do what? They bring their FDI is foreign direct investment. All right? Yeah. Yeah, it Oh, you can't. Hold on. Is it that you guys can't see the question? Is it is it too small? I'll zoom in one more time. Yeah. You can see it? And you in landscape mode too. <laughs> Alright. Alright, cool. So once again, foreign direct investment is where companies or entities outside of a country bring in their physical and financial capital to another country. For example, a company from America, such as let's say Microsoft, investing money in Trinidad. So benefits, one benefit is that the capital coming in will help to develop infrastructure or can be used to help develop infrastructure if it is used in a certain context, right? Um, another thing is it is possible that there could be employment in the construction or if there's construction to be, to be done, it is possible that local firms may be employed and hence local individuals will benefit from employment and income. Um, apart from that, <clears throat> you can also have transference of technology and processes that we may not have or we may not know about. Right? So they may bring technology from a way that we will not have here and we will learn to use it. And in learning to use it, we can then 
probably branch off and do our own thing. As well as, and instead of just technology, maybe processes as well. Maybe they might have ways to do production that we wouldn't know about, right? So there's some transference of knowledge, all right? <clears throat> um, is Wendy's here? Yes, we'll encourage tourism. Tourism is actually, even if it's just business tourism, if it's not like um, social tourism or vacation tourism, right? Microsoft sponsoring him. I wish they were sponsoring me. If I could get a better, a better version of this laptop. This one is still good, yeah? But the best processor and the, um, the one terabyte hard drive. What's that? Mm -hmm. Needs tackies. <laughs> I don't know about all that. Anyhow. Okay, yeah, yes, all right. But they did. All right. Okay, so that's two benefits of obtaining foreign direct investment. And um, we're going again. And here's the last question. Explain two ways in which Caribbean governments can assist in the development of the of the manufacturing sectors in their countries. All right. So two ways that the government can assist in the <coughs> development of the manufacturing sectors. Japan building a car manufacturing plant. Here's FDI. Yes. So you say to develop our infrastructures and use the technology. Um, Erica. Yes, it can be used to help develop infrastructure. So for example, let's say that the company that came down needed better internet service. They may invest in upgrading our entire internet infrastructure. They may, it's not a certainty, but they might. Also, let's say for example, they put them, they gave them a piece of land to, to build in some rural area and the roads were bad, they may decide to upgrade the roads. Um, the technology, yes, if they bring down technology we didn't know about, like, like, like before we had broadband, Let's say a company came down before we had broadband and they brought that technology. Well, there you go. They have to upgrade the system. Do you do IT by chance? I don't, but I have someone who works here with me who does IT. If you all want that um, life to happen, let me know. Message me on Instagram to remind me. Um, he's supposed to be here today, so I, I, I could try to ask him. Right, that's next week, right? All right, Starbucks. Make the ports more reliable so companies can import raw materials. Reducing tax on land. All right. Bro, but we got fiber. <laughs> and then when he tracked the bus, the, the back of bus, the fiber optics. And then men, men download was, was sticking. Anyhow. All right. So let's see if we can actually answer this question. So we have plenty, plenty stuff going on here. And good answers too. So how can Caribbean governments assist in the development of manufacturing sectors in their countries? So one way is to, well, Nicola saying grants. So, so grants and subsidies, right, is basically giving companies money to do that particular activity. So if a, comp if a, a government could say, hey, if you're going to do manufacturing, we will give you all a $1 million subsidy, plus we might give you all tax holidays. So that's, those are financial incentives, right? So the government could, could incentivize um, <clears throat> engaging in, in, in manufacturing, right? Um, subsidies, why? Why are they hiding more, more Lillian? Comment of subsidies. I don't understand that one. That's weird. Right? Establish linkage industries. Emir. Emir has a good one. Right? Um, so a linkage industry is basically where you have companies from different industries forming some kind of link because they have some kind of common element. For example, I, I don't know if you guys still learn about it. It's called like integration. You have vertical integration forwards and backwards and you have horizontal integration. Right? So vertical integration is where a company, if they go backwards, they take over their suppliers. So let's say, as, as they mentioned in Wendy's here, right? So Wendy's could take over like a potato producer or a farm that, 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 that um, raises cows and cattle. So they get their, they basically take over their suppliers, right? Vertical integration forward would be like the opposite. If a farmer took over Wendy's, so the farmer, let's say the farmer had trouble selling his, 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 uh, his beef or his potatoes. So here, what? Let me buy Wendy's and that way I could buy from myself and sell, all right? So you have vertical integration forward and backwards. All right. <clears throat> Sorry? I'm not sure. All right. Um, better transport system. Um, yeah, I, I think upgrading the, the entire road network will, will have benefits because things get around easier and you could have so the entire distribution network will probably get better. Your ping is 100. My, my ping was 11. <laughs> All right. Our farmer balling, yeah, in truth. Right, okay, another way that governments can assist in the development of manufacturing sectors. Um, like I said, to me, it's just really giving incentives and also um, reducing the paperwork necessary to start companies 
and simplifying stuff like paying taxes because i mean it's one thing to say okay we're gonna pay you all money to do this kind of cup this kind of entity okay cool let's go all right so fill out a million pages of paperwork <laughs> right every six months <laughs> in triplicate with peripherals and environs and like, what 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 right so simplify the process of 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 um, registering your company and of filing any necessary paperwork, making sure that the, the tax remittance process is easy and transparent, right? Because it's not just set up the company, it's the running and the maintenance, and all these things have to happen, right? You realize you said you were down to the Yes, I did. Okay, yeah. Limited, yeah, it's a limited company, that's correct. Yep. Yeah. Why would you not pay tax? I just wanted to set up a company and have a company. And that was part of the process. I was like, okay, cool. All right. What did you do in the first quarter? What's that? You did the whole quarter. The course? What course? My dad did some course about um, you know what it's called? I don't know, but. How the course do you know if you get one of your sole trainers? No. Because then I have unlimited liability. So I have like two or something. So they have to pay. One second, I have to open for um, this gentleman here. One second. Hey, how are you doing? Do you need I think it's true. Which is in what? Tax reducing tax on the manufacturing costs. That could help, yeah. So incentivizing, which is making people want to do it, and with, with either subsidies, reducing taxes, or whatever the case is, and simplifying the process. So make them want to do it and make it easy to do. Long story short. Um I feel like I feel like they mentioned the FDI a bit earlier to give you a bit of a hint as to how you can answer this question too. So you could also encourage foreign direct investment by tax holidays. You could offer foreign companies tax holidays so they could come down here and not pay taxes for a while, get the company going, and then they could start paying taxes later down. Reduce barriers to entry. Correct. Um, what all you want? <laughs> um, oh, are you talking about pings? Sorry. They can assist by providing money, proper machinery, right? Access to resources. I agree with that. King Minor. Very good. All right. Okay, guys. I think that is the end of the paper. So it took us a while to get to 2018, boys. So I hope when you guys doing the exam, it will take so long. Obviously, I wouldn't be there inflating the time and getting sidetracked. All right. You all want to tackle 2019 one time? We could cherry pick some stuff from 2019 if you all want. Let's do that now. 2019, John. Hello, can I message you for some answers on Facebook? I wish I can come to your class. I don't know that. Um, you can message me on Facebook or Instagram. That's not a problem. Um, you could also message me on email. <clears throat> right? Blossom. Hey, hey. I see you in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. So do our next paper. One time. John 2019. All right, guys. So we are 238. So at most, we could go to 315. So we're doing... We just call not answers as we go along, right? We're not writing on nothing. All right, let me go. A, define the term capital as a factor of production and state two examples. Right? Say it again. All right. That's, uh, no, that, right, so that's, that's capital assets, right? Or, or physical capital, right? You have two types of capital, right? So first of all, capital as a factor of production refers to the resources used to start and maintain the business. We have two subclassifications or two classifications. You have physical and financial, right? Uh -huh. Right, okay, generate money, okay, good. So capital, the physical capital refers to the assets, the resources, right? Your machinery, your plant, even your workers, that's it, the next step, right? Um, sorry, no, 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 capital, workers is labor. Sorry about that. Right? And your financial capital is the money you use to start and to make your payments, etc., etc. So physical and financial capital. All right. Next, list four sources of capital that could be used when setting up a business. 
Capital, and capital is man-made resources, assets used in the business example, cash or machinery. Yes, good. Sorry? No, well, right. So you can have raw material um, that, that is not man-made, uh, that is extracted. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, remember land, no, hold on, no, sorry, 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 no, 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 we can't classify because land is natural resources. Right, so if it's not, if it's man-made, it is capital. Agreed, agreed, agreed. No, man-made is capital. Loan from financial institution, agreed. Personal savings, invents though, personal, right, good. Sorry, next, four sources of capital, right. So loan from financial institution, loan from family, personal savings, share capital, um, financial instruments such as debentures, convertible bonds, all right. Crowdfunding, I like that one, Nicholas, it's a good one, crowdfunding. Government grants, yes. Venture capital are type, yes. Venture capital, angel investors and these things. All right, you should, you should check out Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V. He's a easy real man to follow on Instagram and thing. Loan from banks, yes. Fixed capital, yes. All right, see, June wants to set up a small supermarket but is unsure whether she should operate as a sole trader or establish a partnership. Define the term partnership. A man said begging for money in the main road. All right, fine, you can do that. I'm not sure how effective it would be. Then again, there's some of those people who, who do beg and up with plenty of money, eh? Yeah. I had a friend who works... I had a friend who worked in the bank and he said, yeah, the guy who would beg outside the bank had a deposit account with thousands of dollars inside of it, eh? So, just, just know. Investment. Okay, I can agree with that. Investment by investors. All right, define term partnership. A partnership is an entity that is owned by how many people? More than, more, than, well, more than one person, between 2 and 20. And it has a common, and they're all involved in this organization with a common view to make a profit. Very good. All right, 2 to 20, sharing responsibility, country capital. Right. 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 So they could all, right. So you can have unlimited liability, um, generally speaking, or you can have a limited partnership where, with the exception of one partner, who has unlimited liability, all the other partners can have limited liability. All right. To achieve a common goal, yes. Okay. Outline, did I answer? Did I miss something? No. Okay, next. Outline two benefits of June establishing a partnership over a sole trader. So what's a, what are some benefits of having a partnership as opposed to having a sole trader? Huh? Shared risk. Potentially more capital available. What about responsibilities? You could share duties and responsibilities. You could divide labor, right? Yes, you could get more capital, right? Um, so we said two, no outline. The outline profits profits are shared, less work. Okay, so that's correct, Varish, right? So um, outline two benefits. She can have, she can potentially have un, um, limited liability if another partner agrees to have unlimited. At the very least, the risks are shared because now there's somebody else to help in the event of something going wrong. Um, you can also be more productive by dividing labor and specializing and hence increasing output. You can at the very least have more capital available at start to potentially buy more assets or take advantage of more opportunities. And in the event she gets sick or whatever, somebody else is left running the business, etc., etc. Share work, shared risk, raise more revenue and responsibilities. Persons may be specialized, right, contributing skills, expertise, increase capital, less work, she won't bear all the losses. Unlimited life. Okay, good. All right. I like all of that. So just three ethical issues that June should consider in setting up and operating her business. Hold on. What's limited liability? Limited liability is where your personal assets are not at risk of being sold in the event that the, the business entity has to, it, it goes bankrupt and have to, has to pay off all the creditors. If you have unlimited liability, you may have to sell your house, sell your car, you had to rent your dog out for people to play with, you know, all these things, right? So limited liability avoids that. <clears throat> okay, continuity, not polluted. Right, so ethical issues. So ethics has to do with right and wrong, a code of conduct, right? Basically doing the right thing even when it's hard to do so, all right? Was that sorry? No, it just says suggest three ethical issues she should consider in setting up and operating her business. So I've seen somebody say paying taxes. They call always telling me why I paying taxes for, <laughs> right? It's a it's a it's a 
it is actually a legal obligation once you are operating um, and you earn a particular amount. So she could, she has to consider whether to, I mean, she should not evade tax. Tax evasion is illegal. Tax avoidance is actually legal. Eh? Tax avoidance is simply not engaging in something that would require you to pay tax. So for example, in Trinidad, if you earn more than 6000 a month or 72000 a year, you don't have to pay any income tax. Eh? So you could choose to earn 72000 or less. Right? There are also certain goods on which there are no VAT charged. Right? They might not be nice goods, they might be like red beans rice and the old kind of rice, but you might want jasmine rice. <clears throat> so if you have fancy taste, you have to pay for that. Right? Also, if you don't want to pay taxes on importing anything, then don't import anything. So you could avoid tax. But evading tax, like when, for example, all your, your auntie or cousins come in now from the States and they say, I want a new iPhone, bring it for now. Okay, cool. So they put the iPhone on a socks inside the suitcase and they bring it down and they don't go in the red line and customs and they clear it. You've just evaded tax. Did I just suggest to people online how to do that? Jail, here I come. Anyhow, sorry, right. So, um, you have tax. So, paying taxes, right, avoiding misleading advertisements, right? So, she can make promises. Um, What's that? Misleading and making misleading advertisements, right? Um, paying workers a fair wage, right? You were talking earlier about the, um, the Venezuelans in Trinidad, how people not paying them as much as they pay locals. And because of that, they, they, they rather hire Venezuelans than locals now, mm -hmm. right? So, but they mightn't be paying them fairly, right? Somebody said pollution, testing on animals, right? Registering the business as a legal entity. Javon says, thanks for the idea about the iPhone and the socks. All right, anyhow, whatever. <laughs> right, so, right, so pollution. So it's, it's very easy for someone to, to create stuff and have a lot of waste. And it might not be as easy to dispose of that waste. So you have to, of course, make allowance. That, 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 that's a decision. You could choose not to do the responsible thing and to pollute, right? Or you could choose to do the responsible thing. It might cost you more money, right? But you also have to consider if customers find out I was doing, for example, right? Let's say somebody was making burgers and ran out of cows. And they say, well, let me kill some dog, right? And they cook dog and cook cat and thing and they have ham hamburgers, right? But that is not the ethical thing to do, right? So, of course, if your customers find out what's going to happen. Right, and, it, then, and then the health authority probably going to come. They're going to arrest your, your city. Right. No, it, it, hot dog is not made of dog, yeah? I just know that, yeah? Right. Right, so what I'm saying is... um. Not polluting, or, or sorry, or, or the sorry. The implication is that if you engage in unethical practices and your customers find out, you could stand to basically lose all of your business, because people, society expects that companies will do the right thing and not endanger not endanger society while trying to make a profit, right? And endangering society can come in different forms. You can have pollution, which is the major one, right? Um, you also have the stuff where the delivery trucks take up room on your road and cause traffic, mash up your road, that kind of stuff. Um, you also have situations like noise, sorry? Tax evasion, right, all that stuff. So you have the tax evasion that you don't want to do. Um, you have proper hiring and firing practices and compens fair compensation. And you have trying not to pollute or to take steps to mitigate the negative effects of your production process on society. Noise pollution is something to, to reduce as well, all right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. Air yeah, pollution, yeah. Correct legal documents. Correct. Yes, unfair treatment of workers. I agree. All right, we're moving on. Explain to June the importance of conducting a feasibility study. Three marks. What is a feasibility study? What is, what is the meaning of the word feasible? insurance in event of an accident i agree with that one feasible means that it makes sense to do something okay. right if you're saying like it have apparently it have people who will take a loan to play mass at kind to go fets and ash wednesday they have no money in their bank account does that seem feasible to anybody no. no right it does not seem feasible so a feasibility study in the context of business right it shows the likelihood of a business being successful it's like market research to figure out, does it make sense for me to engage in this venture, right? If 
If you have a big company, for example, that is supplying all of its customers direct to their house with, with let's say, let's say it was drinking water, right? And you come up and you're selling small bottles of water and you're charging more for delivery. Does that make sense? It might not, all right? So the importance, now it says three marks, right? So the importance of conduct. So the first mark you get is for defining what a feasibility study is, right? So how wise it is to do something to know the likelihood of your business venture if it is going to be successful or a failure. Is the research done to see if an idea is workable to know the business could be successful, All right? Cool. So yes, so a feasibility study is a study or research done on the part of a business to know, to have an idea about whether it's, its plan, its, its business venture will be successful. Whether the activity in which it chooses to engage, whether it's the provision of a service or the production and, and supply of a good, makes financial sense. Financial most of all, right? And the importance of that is that the finding will dictate whether or not you should proceed with the business venture. Because if you have to proceed with it, there could be significant financial um, requirements especially if you're going to use plenty of technology and do a whole social media blitz and you need to have online presences, right? So a lot of resources stand to be employed if you proceed with the business venture. So the feasibility study will tell you, first of all, if it makes sense, if it shows that you can make a profit on this, it might take a couple of years and okay, you go ahead. If it shows that, look, the, the market is already saturated, you're not likely to make a, 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 a dent in this market unless you invest significantly more resources and go on a whole market in blitz, right? <clears throat> then you need, you need to know these things before you jump in, right? Some people might say, just jump in with both feet and figure it out. That's not necessarily a good idea, right? Especially if it's dark water. Sorry, I just, I, I'm overextending that metaphor, right? Identify level of demand for your product. It can help to assess if it will be profitable and cost of production investigation to determine if the business has a probability of success to reduce wastage of inputs and assets. I agree. All right, so that those are the importances. To know if it makes physical sense, or sorry, financial sense to make the investment. In other words, will this be profitable? It could avoid wastage, and it could help you to actually modify your plan if you realize that more needs to be invested or less, right? You may decide, look, I need to invest $5 billion. And when you do your market, you're like, no, you just need $150,000. You can save the rest of the money, <laughs> right? So it helps you to understand and to avoid wastage. That's correct. All right. Nothing has been omitted. All right. Number Basically, what happens sometimes, they're like, you know, like how when I do handouts for you all, the example on this side and the question on this side for you all to do, so you can see what having to turn back. Yeah. That's basically why. Right. Business organizations perform many transactions daily which require use of documents. List three types of business documents. Again, I saw a triple molillion. What do you do? Gargle, salt, and water. No, I mean water and one of them. Warm salt water. Don't drink it, eh? It's not to drink, it's to gargle and regurgitate, right? To expectorate, right? Inf invoice. Bill of leading. Receipt. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, um, In, our requisition. Requisition note. All right. Materials requisition. And credit notes, debit notes. Right. Okay. Paying in slips. Statement of account. Check counterfoil. All right. I like all of those. Let's move check on. Counterfoil. When you rip a check out of the checkbook, there's a little stub left. Because a check stub or a counterfoil. And on that, you're supposed to write the date to whom the payee, um, the amount, and the reason. Letter of inquiry. Actually, yeah. Letter of comfort. Um, all, all sorts of things. Letter Checks. Of yeah, letter of comfort is, um, okay. So let's say a company wanted to borrow money from a financial entity, an institution. And you all know the word collateral, right? Collateral is like a security for a loan. So that company may have another company associated or affiliated or it may have a rich uncle or rich father. So it may say, look, to me to get this loan, I might not have like physical assets for security, but I have my uncle who have a few million dollars in the bank. I'm going to let him write a letter to this bank saying, in the event that this does not, that the business cannot pay you back, I will pay you back from my personal funds, blah, blah, blah. Right? So then that will give the bank or the lending institution comfort to lend this other institution money. 
Right? Only if you want to show up. Mm -hmm. receipts. Correct. Receipts, mm -hmm. catalog, bill of lading, and airway bill. I really rusty on bill of lading. Isn't bill of lading has to do when you're shipping goods? Um, it, it's like a manifest. It gives you like details of, of the, the quantities and types of goods that are being brought and to whom it, from whom it is coming and to whom it has to be delivered. So I, th I think that's what a bill of lading is. An airway bill, well, airway is something that has to do with if it's shipping on an airplane, whereas leading might have to do with um, a physical ship. And then you can't send that to you. Stop that. Um, so bill of lading has to do with sea transport. Okay, all right, yeah. Stock cards, stock cards, right? Stock, yeah. Okay. And quotation. Quotation. Somebody said quotation. Yeah, so you're good. Destination sheet. Right. Destination sheet. Okay. Delivery note. Delivery note. All right. State three reasons why firms utilize documents in business transactions. Contracts. Contracts. Very good. Yes, contracts. Right. Why do three reasons why they utilize um, documents? Right, a paper trail or a record, right? So, so proof Show proof that the transaction occurred, right? What else? To show us evidence supports the recitation of a sale and to determine if fraud is taking place. To prove goods have been given or purchased. Keep track of business activities, provide financial evidence. I like that one, Kaimani. Or is it Kimani? Provide information for financial statements, accountability. All right, four minutes till three. All right, don't worry, we'll go a little past that. Don't worry about that. All right, so three reasons why firms will utilize business documents and business documents in transactions. One, documents are used to provide information. Long story short, is the information which is valuable, right? So what do we need information for? To know that something for sure happens. Right, that's something official happen, that you can track it. So somebody said tracking responsibility, is said paper trailer record, right. So <clears throat> documents provide information and information is the key to everything, right. So the overarching reason for any document is to provide information. And you want information for accountability, right, for tracking. You know, somebody mentioned provide information for financial statements, which is also very important, all right. Accurately analyze business activity, proof. Accurate analyses. I agree with all those things. Okay. Distinguish between insurance and assurance. Hey, we were talking about this a couple hours ago when we started the live. Right? So what's the difference between insurance and assurance? Right. So insurance is protection against a possible risk. Something that may not, may not happen, but can happen. Whereas assurance is... Right, so assurance is a protection against, well not protection per se, but it's compensation for when something that we know will happen, yeah. happens, yeah. right? The, the, the most popular example is death, right? So upon death, a payment will be made, right? Something may or may not happen. Risk of the unknown, right? Insurance is covered for something that might happen, right? Yes, Molinian, very good. Assurance is for a known event, so, something that, okay, good, death, right? Lovely, we have the idea, going again. Name two types of insurance policies. Um, indemnity. Good faith. No. That's a principle of insurance, right? No, wait. Yeah, I hang on. I, I really rest with insurance, eh? Mm -hmm. Endowment. Motor. Motor insurance. Life insurance. Whole life insurance. I see in here. Insurance equal uncertainty. Agreed. Shania. Yes, that's correct. Sorry? Business insurance. Business insurance. All right. Contents. You have contents insurance. Um, actually. Sorry? Proximate clause. I don't know if that's a type of insurance. That sounds like some, a part of a contract. All right. That sounds like. Type of insurance. Yeah. Type of insurance policy. Glass insurance. Okay, that's actually possible. A man say need goldfish insurance, yes, marine insurance. Aviation insurance. Aviation, all right. Hull insurance. What? Hull? Hull insurance. Hull insurance. That's that's for our ship. Provides coverage for mm -hmm. 
Okay. Bad debt insurance. Okay. Emir. Emir. Hold on to hear what Emir say. Red gal insurance. Uh, all right. Thanks. Approximate value. That's principles of insurance, right? So if life is insurance, what actually, Ayula, life is assurance, right? You can have health insurance. I know they call it life insurance, but the correct term, I believe, is assurance. Plate and glass insurance. No, no, that's correct. Yeah, because with glass could break. And if glass breaks, it could damage people and things, right? So... Oh, yeah, like, um, you autistic do um, doctor on YouTube. You autistic like, doctor on YouTube? Like, there's a scene where glass broke and some killing is, like, on, you, on YouTube, or, or, the, or are you talking about a good doctor? Oh, good doctor. Okay. All right. Those for after, I don't get up. I don't get that. <coughs> Cargo insurance. I didn't see any. Outline one principle upon which insurance is based. Aha. Uh -huh. Let me hear all you. Isn't it pooled risk insurance? The pooling of risk. Principle of loss minimization. Yeah. Somebody yeah. said, you all said good, you all said utmost good faith, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Proximate cause or nearest cause, proximate cause, right? Yeah. Subrogation. Yeah. It's a fancy word, boy. Yeah. Contribution. To subrogate is to take the place of. Yeah. And to, to end, right? Okay, so, so, so to subrogate means to take the place of. Okay, so the insurance company will pay you cash to take the place of whatever it is you've lost. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like a car or something. Okay, all right, I like it. Um, in, I see an insurable interest. I remember that one. Yeah, that one's a good one. Um, indemnity. Indemnity is important when it, it, it restores you to your former position before the loss. Contribution on the insurance. All right, you all, you all know your things, boy. You're better than me with insurance, yes, boy? I was never a fan of this, this part of it, to be honest. Although it is important. Don't get me wrong. All right. Explain two ways here in which insurance is beneficial to a firm. So what is the advantage on a mixed economic system? Um, let me get back to you now, Kevin. We're trying to deal with some insurance stuff here. Hold on, wait, just now. Subrogation means the company will take the remains of the thing you lost? Okay. Okay. Okay, so that, that's, that's part of it. Okay, so subrogation means they will... Okay. Okay. Yeah, they will take it back. Okay, so they will take the wreckage and they'll, they'll pay you the money, the right, like the write-off. Okay. All right, thanks, Emir. Emir. Why each? Uh huh. Like, um, something happens to any one of their assets. Mm -hmm. um, and they will take those. All right, okay. Right, so basically, we kind of talk about almost like indemnity there, right? So if something happens to one of the company's assets, they will be compensated and basically restored to the position they were in before the loss took place. Mm -hmm. So they could basically operate as if, they, as if nothing had happened. Mm -hmm. So they wouldn't miss out on opportunities, all right? Safeguard profits if natural disaster was to happen. I like that one. Yeah, yeah you could, you could, I mean, I know it, it could be, you could take insurance against like floods, um, natural disaster. Although, are those things considered acts of God? Can you insure against acts of God, boy? Yeah. Okay. Provides protection from invest, for investors from some race, some, some, hit me some race, some risks. Okay. All right. Um, okay, another way that insurance is beneficial to a firm is that it could facilitate... Um, <clears throat> hold on, let me just get my phrasing properly here, right? It could facilitate having, I want to say, some along lines of easier business interactions because if one entity knows that the other entity is not insured, right, it might not want to do business with them because if something happens to that other entity, then this one who has the whatever interaction with that one will will actually stand to make a loss too, right? So insurance, for example, shippers, right? If a shipper has insurance, right? Someone who wants to send goods says, okay, look, if the shipper has insurance, I'll ship with them because if in the event that they lose the cargo, the ship goes down, they're going to be compensated, they can pay me back. Whereas if the other 
if the other shipper does not have insurance but they're charging less right that might be attractive but if something happens to the ship on the ocean there's no compensation to be gotten yeah. right so it can facilitate um the confirmation or or i'm not even sure how to phrase this number right? anybody on saves company from bad reputation okay i could agree with that um it would facilitate I think my brain's saying I had enough. <laughs> I'll lose my words. All right. So if if a company is insured, oh sorry, hold on. Let me open the door for doing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my friend Dwayne. Dwayne does the IT. You know, who, those who have been asking for um, the IT business, the IT lives, he could facilitate, but he, I, I, I don't know if you all will be um, online for it and um, if he's available. So we could look into it and I could post it up on, um, on Instagram. All right, so he's the one who will be doing that stuff. Okay? Yes, IT. All right. I'm going to say, Dwayne, that's not how you spell it, by the way. <laughs> Anyhow. All right. <laughs> all right. Big up, Dwayne. Molinian, Molinian crying out, out of happiness, yes? Goldfish saying, of course. Issa saying, please do the IT. Okay, yes, please. So yeah, let's have an IT crowd. Oh, okay. All right. Um, What topics do you think you'll be more interested in concerning lives? Why are he asking me? No, I'm asking you guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what to do? Hey, guys. what to do? Message, message me on, um, on Instagram, right? And I'll, I'll let him know. Anyhow, back to the POB. Later, folks. Yeah, I'll give a second rupee. I will be there. All right, sorry. At a bar show. Cough, drop. All right. All right. Okay. We're moving on quickly. It's after three. This is a question. All right. State two advantages to the customer of utilizing each of the following terms of sales cash. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's an advantage of a cash sale. You get your goods right away. I think. Yeah. Okay. But it says two advantages in each case, eh? Well, that's what they want to. So the transaction is yeah, it's over quickly, right? There's no there's no um no worry about having to pay back in the future about interest. Yeah. All right, okay, cool. You could get a discount. Immediate immediate ownership of goods. Agreed. Higher purchase. Right. You don't pay less. You pay more over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You get. So you get it. Up front. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. So with higher purchase. So Crystal, Crystal Brown, I didn't see this name before. Cash, goods are received right away, transaction over quickly. I agree. Kimani says no interest on cash. Very good. So higher purchase, I agree. Um, you do not have to put up all of the cash right away, especially if it's a lot of money. You could get the good to go with. You end up paying more over time, but you get your good right away. Um, second, the installments on it could be affordable. So you could actually make use of your good um, while still paying for it. All right. You have more time to pay the full payment. Okay, cool. Goods become yours immediately. That's cash. Payments are done in installments. All right. Right. Lay away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's almost like higher purchase, but without you getting good up, up front. So to lay away literally means to lay it away somewhere. So you put a light on somewhere. So you lay it away, literally, until the person pays off it. Yeah. Until you pay off it. That's correct. Right. So it's like higher purchase without getting any good up front. You have to wait till they pay off everything to get it good. Uh, but, right, well, one advantage I know is that you are almost, uh, once you make your payments, you are, you, are, you are guaranteed, you have the security, you will get the good that you want, but just in due time. The other thing is, um, once again, it, 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 it um, eliminates the need to have all of the resources up front to, to get something, but once again, it is advantage you don't actually get it till you have the money. Mm -hmm. 
Correct. You have to pay more. In the science, I can't. I'll see if I can find somebody. I'll see if I can find somebody. Um, lay away. You ensure the security if the good of the good until fully paid for. I could agree with. I like that one. In the I I'm sorry. I don't do in the science. I'll see if I can find somebody. I'll let you guys know. All right. <laughs> Layaway, consumer get protection from fluctuation of prices. I guess that depends on the agreement with the supplier. But if that's, if that's part of it, then yes. Describe one factor that could influence the behavior of consumers. Aha, uh -huh. one factor influencing the behavior of consumers. Price. Price, right? What's, what's the basic thing with price? Mm -hmm. Income is another factor. I agree. Advertising. As I said, promotion, right? As part of promotion. All right, price, agree. So price, <coughs> promotion, income, taste. taste and preferences, agreed. All right, advertising, season, quality, quality right? The quality could fall under product because the product could actually influence behavior, the quality of the product. Quantity. I agree. Quantity, okay, I guess it depends. Yeah, if, if it's like a, a kind of, like a bulk purchase or something. All right, okay, all right, let's move on. I think we understand that one. Brand loyalty, yes, I agree with our crystal, very good. Tradition, that's very important, I agree, yes. Income preference, right. Shows a traditional chain of distribution for a certain product. Identify each link in the chain by placing the correct name in each of the, each box above. So I would think the first one would be manufacturer. Manufacturer. Wholesaler. Wholesaler. Yeah, retailer, and then consumer. Sorry, one sec. Oops, my my four o'clock class has come early. One second. Yeah, well, it's actually pretty safe if she comes home. Guys, they're gonna have to wrap up soon. Yeah, producer, wholesaler, retailer, consumer, manufacturer, wholesaler, retailer, consumer. Very good. Customer or consumer? Um, they both mean the same thing. What's that? What change? Or the chain? Traditional chain? Yeah. So manufacturer, producer, wholesaler, retailer, consumer. All right. List four problems that are likely to be encountered in the distribution of goods. Just list them. Miscommunication. Miscommunication? Well, I think that could be a problem in anything, so you might get away with that. All right, so potential damage to product if it's not handled properly. I see an immediacy and spoilage. I could agree with that. Spoilage? Yeah. Yeah, if it's not stored properly. Mm -hmm. Oh, it expired. All right. Improper storage facilities, yes. Storage of good. Right, so the storage could be improper. I agree with that. Um, distribution problems. So we said spoilage, man mishandling, leading to damage. Delay. Delay? Yeah. If you think about, yeah, if you think about Christmas time or like in the state recently where they had a lot of snow, right? Those snow things were grounding airlines and therefore um, um, the planes couldn't, couldn't depart out of the states to ship goods to, um, to other countries, right? Yeah, you could lose goods <coughs> if improperly tracked. I see a lack of security, right? Ineffective communication. Well, hey, look, Crystal, say ineffective communication too. Very good. Brown. Geography, boy. Hold on. Are you saying geography with respect to the exam? Like you want to lie with geography? Or you want, or geography is a problem with um, distribution? Yeah, I think we did a live on that. That's last week. A oh, people one. Okay, okay. Delay in shipment, I agree. Okay, cover that. Next. Anybody want to people outside see the witness? Anybody? Real quick. I don't want to keep your parents back. All right, cool. So we're going until then. Until they reach? You had a walk, anybody walk home? No? Travel home? <laughs> Actually, wrong people. All right. Suggest so one appropriate mode of transportation. Oh, as a problem, yeah, I agree with that. We can work with that. All right. <clears throat> Poor GPS planning. All right. That, that's interesting. Pipeline for the oil truck. All right. 
Oh, you all answered the question already. Good, good. They're speeding. All right, so just one appropriate mode of transportation. Fresh meat from processing plant to supermarket. Refrigerated truck. Cement from factory to construction site. Cement truck. Hold on, when they say cement, are they talking about the bags of cement? No, No, but that's not, that's no, no. Cement comes from a factory as dry cement in a bag. So you could say... No, but they both be thinking yeah, they don't they don't premix the cement there, no. As in like That's when they mix it on the construction site. <laughs> Oil okay, I see in I see in pipeline. So yeah, um so pipeline is number three for sure. Bauxite from mine to processing plant. Ships? Shipping? Bauxite is like an is like a mineral or oil extract. Um, mm. Yeah. No, no, again. <laughs> Pipeline, train, Molina is in trade. Okay, I can get on board with trade. All right, cool. Moving on. Outline two ways in which a budget could assist persons in the management of their personal income. Um, a budget is. Right. All right. So a budget allows you to look, look to see. Right, look to see where your actual expenditure is versus your planned expenditure and see where you may be going overboard. Right, you can identify your excess, your excesses and maybe maybe your shortages in other places. So you can maybe um, kind of rebalance it somehow. Right, um, it also, a very important thing with a budget, it allows you to have a plan in the first place. So know what to do before you do it. So that way, you're not being, it, it makes it easier to save, right? Because you don't, you're not moving by guess. If it's a budget, it's a plan, and if you stick to your plan, you will achieve your objectives. Are you alone, girl, here now. Look, I have my receipts here to put in Excel. Jan and February, on March, April, May. Some people don't, eh? They don't do any, anything. Um, I leave it overspending. I agree with that. Help with savings allows you to prioritize. I agree with that. All right. Don't have children, man. Say, Lord have mercy. You know, you can still scrunch. Yeah, we want that one. Well, she already has Sage. So we could add one. So she wants Thompson. Sage, awesome Liam Thompson. Yeah. Describe three services offered by commercial banks. Savings, savings account, checking account, ATM, safe deposits, loans, financial advice. Etc. Etc. Debit cards, credit cards. Yeah. Yep. List four functions of a central bank. No commercial bank and central bank different things. So issue notes and coins. Provide. Sorry. Right. So hold on. Issue notes and coins, which is money. Right. They also implement government's fiscal and monetary policy. Right, they are the lender of last resort to the government, and they supervise they supervise the commercial banks. All right, act as government bank. Yes, lender of last resort. Yes, manage exchange rates on behalf of the government. Accept loans, make deposits. The central bank act as bank to government. Um, by the time most most times is within a half an hour to an hour after I end, if not sooner. All right. Issue notes on coins, bound to the government for an exchange, provide loans, automatic banking facilities, okay. Advisor to the government, that's a good one. Acts as bank, as bank, the commercial banks, right? Offset inflation, right. So they, they facilitate the implementation of government's monetary and fiscal policy to achieve those goals. Pay off government debts, okay. All right, cool. I think, yeah, they oversee operational commercial bank. Issue interest rates, right? So they influence the interest rates as part of monetary policy. Yeah, Explain you. how central bank uses each of the following measures to regulate the activities of commercial banks. Cough drop, yes, you're correct. O open market operations. Do we know what open market operations are? Mm -hmm. Open market operations is the sale of government securities to soak up excess liquidity. Right? Liquidity being money, the money supply, yeah. right? So when you when they sell these government securities, basically, people will use money and entities will use money to buy these things. So the central bank then takes money off of the market, right? Money is like a good, eh? So if you take, 
if you take an excess of a good off a market, you could, you could stabilize the supply or even create a shortage. The price of money is the interest rate, right? So if you take off the excess liquidity, you could actually ease up inflation, right? <clears throat> Repeat that, please. Hold on. The definition of what open market operations. I believe it's the sale of government securities, the sale of, yeah, of government securities on the open market. That's why it's called open market operations, right? To, in order to help, um, this is absorb as excess liquidity. But that's for one of y'all there. Somebody stop on the corner for one of y'all. Sorry, guys. Just, just give me one second. If you didn't... Yeah. All right, all right, guys. Just, just give me a minute. I'll, I'm gonna come and finish it off. Um, but I have to see off one of my students, right? Yeah. Issue government security on the open market. That's correct. Um, I don't have any copy of now, but um, you can, you can hold it. And what you could do is um, whenever you're dropping fees, you can bring that book from our copy. All right. Does anybody have the econ next week? All right. That's last Tuesday. I'll try and have both days Tuesday and Wednesday because econ is Thursday, right? You got a Wednesday? So Monday and Tuesday then? Yeah. I, see, I see it's Tuesday. Yeah. Alright, so after the IT exam then. So, oh, and I see it's paper one or paper two? Yeah, paper two. Friday, I'll see what it is. Oh, okay. Alright. Yeah. So, you can take a paper. Huh? You can take a paper. Oh, no. Oh. I'm, I'm taking these pictures from one of my friends. Alright, cool. Alright. One minute, guys. Just one, one second. Alright guys, sorry, I'm back now. Right, so yes, like I was saying, open market operations is a sale of government securities such as government bonds, treasury bills, treasury bonds on the open market, which means to anybody, <clears throat> the public at large, so individuals and organizations. And what this does is the intent is to soak up excess liquidity. Basically, it means taking money out of the economy, right? Right, it could be used as a tool against inflation, or it could be used actually as a monetary policy too, right? Because remember, the supply of money, right, comes from individuals and organizations to the bank, right, to the commercial banks. If the central bank removes that money, some excess money, what happens is the supply of money decreases. And if you consider basic supply and demand, when supply decreases, price has to rise. So if the central bank takes money off out of the economy via OMO, which is what open market operations is, correct, they control the supply of money, right? And the interest rate, right? Correct. Rahul, hey Rahul, how are you doing? Sorry, I know, I know the comment there. So far, right. <clears throat> okay, next. Liquid asset requirements. Okay, um, I feel this is another way of saying, um, yeah, the, the cash reserve ratio, right? I feel, I feel this is um, another way of saying that. I could be wrong though. But liquid asset means cash, right? And the, the CRR is a cash reserve ratio, and that is the amount of money that commercial banks have to physically keep on hand um, at the bank, at the commercial bank, in order to satisfy daily demand for withdrawals, right? And the rest of the money is what is um, sent to the central bank for safekeeping, all right? So hold on, what did I say? What is the question? Explain how the central bank uses each of the following measures to regulate. Okay, cool. So OMO is basically like a signal for interest rates to go up. Actually, no, that's a repo rate. The repurchase rate. Liquid asset requirement, basically, what happens there is if the, if the central bank requires um, commercial banks to increase their CRR, right, it means they have less money to lend. Less money to lend means they have to raise the price of lending the money, which is the interest rates. All right, so by increasing this, it decreases the bank's supply of money, which leads to higher interest rates. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, we're gonna go for the next five minutes because I had to stop you guys at that point in time because I have a class <laughs> that I had to do, right? Define each of the following types of taxes. 
No, Alexa, I have to teach Alexa. Right, so progressive taxation, right, is a tax that increases as you earn more. Right, so the, the higher, the more income you earn, the more tax you pay. All right, proportional tax is one that's a fixed percentage to everybody across the board. All right, so for example, if let's say income tax was 25% um, of your taxable income, everybody pays the same proportion. So if you earn a million dollars and that's taxable, you pay 250,000 in tax. If you earn a thousand dollars, you pay 250 in tax. It's the same proportion. So it's kind of it's kind of born equally, right? Um, whereas progressive tax means that the tax percentage actually increases as you go higher. Yes. State three reasons why governments charge taxes to earn revenue in order to carry to, to finance the provision of public and merit goods, to redistribute income. So basically, you're taking from the rich to give to the poor. And the third one is to finance. Well, we, no, we said um, we said public and merit goods already, right? Yeah. And the third one is to discourage the consumption of demerit it's goods, curb imports, redistribute. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, almost like Robin Hood. So could you tell me the difference between line and staff relationship? We did that already, boy, Raoul, boy. Um, line relationship, as far as I know, is vertical in nature, right? Like manager and employees. The staff one is, is, is that horizontal? I can't remember offhand, boy. Sorry, sorry, Rahul. I wish you were here a bit earlier. The finance government's expenditure. Yes, simple and straightforward. Very good, Neb. Next, identify three ways in which governments regulate the activities of business. Taxation, <laughs> regulation. Well, sorry, that one is too generic. But by I mean by laws, you have to register as a business. And what else, boy? Apart from taxation and regulation. Sorry, staff is horizontal. All right, thanks, Erica. All right, so three ways in which governments regulate activities of business. Um, taxation, regulations, like um, laws, laws um, that will make certain things illegal to do, and laws making other things legal to do. And I guess monitoring, right? Because you had a, oh, a, a registration. Registration and, and constant um, reg regular submission of documents to up the records, okay. Quotas, standards, standards on products, taxation, laws. All right. Next, outline two measures used by governments to protect consumers. Um, product, somebody mentioned product standards, so the, the implement the establishment of minimum sta um, quality standards for certain products. <sighs> Sorry, guys, my energy dipping here, boy. RL, sorting out and all here. Subsidies. Erica could take over. <laughs> Subsidies, establish sub import controls, price controls. Price controls, yes. Monitoring business activities, yes. Bureau of Standards, yes. Sale of Goods Act, yes. All right, cool. Going again. I just want to finish this paper. This is the last question here. The government of your country has set up centers to train citizens in computer engineering and small appliance repair. Explain two benefits that could be gained from this initiative. Okay, so they're training them in computer engineering. So my assumption there is that people will be more computer inclined and therefore they will, I, I believe, I want to say, they'll be more inclined to use computer technology in their day-to-day -day lives uh, and hence... Sorry? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so yes, more, more technologically advanced workforce, right? The unemployment rate drops. If, okay, they set up sentence to train. Okay, well, okay, okay. If there's a demand for those types of jobs, then yes, you're, you're supplying them. I, I agree with that. But a benefit, one benefit I think would be, if you go simply, it would be a more highly skilled workforce, which would be a more productive workforce, and then you could increase GDP and possibly standard of living. All right? Um, yeah, Rahul, the live will be up. Um, it's automatically put up, right? More technologically advanced workforce efficiency, economic growth, right? So we just said that. Um, and then they said small appliance repair. So once again, yeah, that could be once again just. Sorry, guys, I'm a my brain. <laughs> 
create employment. All right, let's go simple. I think, um, well, the, the employment could be for the people who are, who are doing the training, right? And earning the income could help them to, you know, um, have a better standard of living. But I think overall... Like maybe some more advanced and more, most of the rules. Yeah, increased productivity. No longer need for expats. All right, so we won't need to import any more... Um, yeah, any, any more labor. Specialization. Yes, okay. Yeah. I, th I think the thing I wanted to say most of all um, was, a, a little, a, was a bit of an extension, was because we'll be a bit more computer inclined, we could become a bit more technologically advanced and might have more innovation and, and productivity on that, that side. A hundred? Wow, that's a lot. All right, guys. It encourages entrepreneurship, right? That that's actually what I wanted to lead to, but my brain just wasn't making any connection there, guys. Sorry about that. Right, you said that. Yes, you did. You did. I saw it. I saw it, Shania. That is correct. Yeah. All right, guys. It's three thirty. I had to stop. Right. More innovation requiring technology. I agree. Yes. All right, guys. It was a pleasure. Thank you all for joining. Um, next week I plan to do maybe a, maybe one or two days of econ. All right, encourages creativity, yes. Um, who insta ISA mine? Adapt tuition. You're welcome, you're welcome, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining. And thanks to <coughs> sorry, thanks to Annika, Liam, and Zoe who is here for putting up with me. <laughs> All right. Um, so good luck tomorrow. Let me know how it goes. Right? Look up look up on Instagram for, for the story. I'll ask how it went and you could you could answer me, I'll, I'll answer you back. All right, so you, each, and, each and every one of you is welcome. I'm glad to be of service, and I wish you all the best in the future. All right, guys. Yeah, I'll go on there. Look out for the econ next week on the IT. We'll organize the IT. Message me on Instagram. Adapt tuition. <laughs>